So this right here is a clavicle, which is also called a collarbone. In this particular series, you are going to learn about various bones, how to hold these bones in anatomical position, determine which side of the body the bone belongs to, that is side determination, look at the various features of the bone and something that a lot of students find difficult, that is the muscle insertions of the bone. And trust me, I'll make sure that you understand muscle insertions in the best way possible by using as much diagrams and as much 3D models as possible. But for now, let's look at the anatomical position of this clavicle right here. Let's suppose the examiner comes and gives you the clavicle. Your job is to determine the anatomical position or hold this clavicle in anatomical position. What are you going to do? This, these are the following features that you need to see. The clavicle contains two ends, this and this. It contains a superior surface facing upward, inferior surface facing downward, anterior surface facing forward, posterior surface facing backward. However, right now, we don't know which surface is which and our job is to determine which surface is which first let's look at the two ends one out of the two ends is flat this particular end is flat it is flat and that is why it's also called the flat end the flat end of the clavicle is present away from the midline of the body that is why it is also called the lateral end Let's suppose this pencil right here is your sternum. The clavicle is attached to your sternum. And as you can see, the flat end is present away from the sternum or away from the midline of the body. And that is why it is called the lateral end. What about the other end? The other end is comparatively larger in size. It is quadrilateral in shape. That is, it has four sides. One two, three, and four. One, two, three, and four. This large end is present towards the midline, connected to the sternum. That is why it is also called the medial end. So we have the lateral end and the medial end. The medial end of the clavicle is connected to the manubrium of sternum. So it is also called the sternal head. The lateral flat end of the clavicle is found in connection with the acromion process of the scapula. That is why it is also called the acromion head. This bone right here is the scapula. This process right here is the acromion process of scapula. The Clavicle is found, the flat end of the clavicle is found in connection to the acromion process of the scapula. And that is why it is also called the acromion head. So we have the two, it is also called the acromion end. So we have two ends of clavicle, the flat end or the lateral end or the acromion end and the large end or the medial end or the sternal end. Now let's look at the shaft of the clavicle. So the shaft contains superior surface, inferior surface, anterior surface and posterior surface. This surface right here is a rough towards the lateral end or it contains a slight elevation. It contains an elevation. This elevation is called the conoid tubercle. Remember, the conoid tubercle or this particular roughness towards the lateral end is always present on the inferior surface of the clavicle. So how are you going to hold this clavicle now? You are going to hold this clavicle like this with the inferior surface facing downward. The, posterior, the superior surface is comparatively smoother. But here's the problem. Now you can hold the clavicle like this and say that it is the right clavicle or you could hold the clavicle like this and say that it is the left clavicle with the amount of information I have provided you. So which one is it? 
Is it the left clavicle or is it the right clavicle? For that, you need to distinguish the anterior and the posterior surface of the clavicle. See, the shaft of the clavicle contains two major portions. The portion which is present towards the medial end and forms the majority of the shaft called the medial portion. It forms the two third of the shaft and the remaining smaller portion which is present towards the lateral end called the lateral portion which is one third of the shaft of the clavicle. Whenever you look at a clavicle anteriorly, suppose these two fingers, these, these two fingers are two eyes looking at this clavicle. Then you will see that the medial portion is convex from forward or anteriorly and the lateral portion is concave from forward or anteriorly. So the medial portion is convex anteriorly and the lateral portion is concave anteriorly. So what happens when you hold the clavicle like this? The medial portion becomes concave anteriorly and the lateral portion becomes convex anteriorly. And that's not the right way to hold the clavicle. So the clavicle needs to be held in such a way that the medial portion is convex anteriorly and the lateral portion is concave anteriorly. So with all this information, what do we determine? We determine that this particular clavicle is indeed the right clavicle. Let's revise in very short. The examiner comes and throws the clavicle to, to you. You pick up the clavicle. Okay. So here's the flat end, which is the lateral end. Here's the large end, which is the medial end. Here's the rough surface, which is the inferior surface. Here's the smooth surface, which is the superior surface. Here's the medial portion and here's the lateral portion. Here's the convex city of the medial portion facing forward. Here's the concavity of the medial, uh, the concavity of the lateral portion facing forward. So this is the anterior surface and this is the posterior surface. So this clavicle is the right clavicle. There's nothing special on the superior surface of the clavicle. However, there are few features on the inferior surface of the clavicle that you need to know. Okay, so on the inferior surface, there's a groove that is called the subclavian groove. Sub because it is present below clavian because it is present below clavicle. So the subclavian groove. At the end of this subclavian groove, there's a small hole or a foramen which is called the nutrient foramen because this is from where the pithy bone receives nutrient through blood. Then towards the lateral end, there's a slight elevation of the bone called the conoid tubercle. Then just close to conoid tubercle, there's the trapezoid ridge, which is not properly visible here. So I have used a diagram in the video. So what are the special features present on the inferior surface of the clavicle? There's the subclavian group at the end of which there's nutrient foramen. And then there's towards the lateral end, a tubercle called the conoid tubercle. And just above conoid tubercle, there's a ridge called trapezoid ridge. Somewhere here, a ridge is present, which is called the trapezoid ridge. This bone right here, which I have shown with the help of color green is the clavicle, which is also called the color bone. The clavicle is highly palpable. So I want you right now to use your fingers and feel the bone. As you are looking at the video, I want you right now to feel the bone so that you can understand the bone better. I can't use my fingers because that will mess up the color. So instead I'm using a pen. So here's the clavicle. Here are the two ends of the clavicle. This is the medial end, which is in connection with the sternum. It is round and large. And here's the flat somewhere around here. It's the flat end, which is also the lateral end. The shaft of the clavicle contains two major portion. The portion which is near the medial end called the medial portion. And the portion which is near the lateral end called the lateral portion. 
the medial portion forms the majority of the shaft that is two third of the total shaft and the lateral portion forms the minority of the shaft that is one third of the total portion of the shaft first let's look at the muscle insertions to the lateral portion okay so here's the lateral portion the lateral portion has the anterior border or the border present at the front and the posterior border or the border present at the back to the anterior border the deltoid muscle is attached however this right here is the front head of the deltoid muscle what do i mean by that okay so the muscle of the shoulder is called the deltoid muscle and the muscle of the shoulder or the deltoid muscle has three heads the front head the the lateral head which is right here and then there's the there's the rear head at the back but our concern is the front head the front head of the deltoid muscle the front head of the deltoid muscle is in connection with the anterior border of the lateral portion of your clavicle what about the posterior border to the posterior border trapezius muscle is attached the trapezius muscle is not properly visible from front because this is a large muscle which is present on your upper back however it has a connection with the posterior border of your lateral portion of clavicle so that's it for the lateral portion of your clavicle let's look at the medial portion of the clavicle the medial portion has the anterior surface and the posterior surface to the anterior surface is attached the pectoralis major muscle the pectoralis major muscle is the muscle of your chest and the muscle of your chest has its connection with the anterior surface of medial portion of clavicle now we know the muscle insertions to the lateral portion of the clavicle Let's look at the muscle insertions or the muscle attachments to the medial portion of clavicle. The medial portion contains the anterior surface, the posterior surface, the superior surface and the inferior surface. To the anterior surface, pectoralis major muscle is attached. To the posterior surface, sternohyoid muscle is attached. To the superior surface, sternomastoid muscle is attached. and to the inferior surface so on the inferior surface there's a groove called the subclavian groove to this subclavian groove subclavian muscle is attached the lateral end of clavicle is found in connection with acromion process of scapula with the help of acromioclavicular ligament the medial end of clavicle is found in connection with the manubrium of sternum with the help of sternoclavicular ligament on the inferior surface of clavicle there's the conoid tubercle and the trapezoid ridge the conoid tubercle and the trapezoid ridge is connected with the coracoid process of scapula this is the scapula this is the acromion process and this is the coracoid process to the coracoid process of scapula these two structures are attached with the help of coracoclavicular ligament towards the medial end there's uh, it's not clearly shown here but around the part where green is present green color is present oval impression is present oval impression is attached with the first rib with the help of costo clavicular ligament and all these ligaments i have shown with the help of a very good diagram which will clear your concept